Okay. Okay, so um, everybody, thank you so much for joining this, the first uh, Yuva session on post COVID-19 opportunities. So we wanted to have an open discussion with students of Nagaland. Our lead resource person today is Rohan Abraham. He is a chartered accountant, registered with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. He has a vast experience in the corporate sector, working for firms like Ernest & Young, Arthur Anderson. And also he's also founded a travel agency based in Koyama, which services the northeast of India called India Trail. So what we're gonna do probably is, um, we're gonna probably use 20 minutes of this session where Rohan is gonna be uh, giving a presentation and followed by a question and answer session. But during the presentation, in case you have any questions, you can use the chat window and you can type in your questions over there. And then Rohan can probably ta uh, tackle it after his presentation. So, Again, Ron, this, the stage is all yours. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm losing audio on and off. So if you guys cannot hear me, you have to, someone has to let me know. And I'm just going to keep talking and I wouldn't know. Uh, how do we set that protocol? Hello, would you be able to let me know if you can't hear me on the chat? Might be faster. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. One second. Okay. So, uh, Kulo, can you let me know if you can see this? All right, it's uh, it hasn't appeared yet, but it's coming. Just wait. Why my internet is suddenly so slow? Apologies. Can you try presenting a window or tab? All right. It's visible. Okay. It's visible. Okay, guys. So uh, let's just uh, set some rules here. So um, I'm going to be running through maybe about 10 different slides. A couple of them are a little heavy heavy in the sense that it has a lot of information on it. I don't expect you guys to understand everything immediately, but I can share this with you later. You can go back and read it at your ease. Uh, what would be nice is if you have any questions while I'm talking, you can pop them up on the chat. Um, I can't seem to look at this, the chat and present the screen at the same time, so uh, Kulo can help me with that. Um, so, what we're going to talk about right now is uh, what is the impact that this virus has had on people and on businesses. And once we understand these two, we'll translate that into what might be an opportunity for you. So just, just to really clarify, because I'm, I've got another screen open up and I can't see the presentation myself. So can you guys see the presentation? Anyone? Let me know. Not right now. It's still loading, I think. Because I can just see a black screen. All right, we're good. We can see it. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. I can see the chat now. Okay. So let's let's start with the first thing, which is. Um, I want you guys to understand uh, one, one simple thing, which is that um, 
Corona has opened up the doors for you guys quite significantly because earlier, by living in Nagaland, you had geographical issues, you had boundary issues, you had network issues. Of course, the network issues still continue, but the biggest thing for you is that your geographical borders have been removed because everybody is working online right now. Everybody's trying to do businesses that use technology. And by using technology and by working online, it completely removes the fact that you are two full days away from any, any other major city in the world. So let's just start with these three. I think what I would like to point out here is you guys need to focus on three things to start with. The first is, and the largest thing is K, which is knowledge. And I think that's why you guys have gone to school. That's why you guys are in college. So I think what you need to understand is K is the biggest, biggest contributor to your future. You need to have knowledge. Without that knowledge, you're virtually useless to yourself if you're running a business and to an employer if you're being hired. The second thing is P, practice. So you need knowledge is great, but you need to put it into practice. And you need that's how you learn from your mistakes. That's how you become a stronger and a better uh, professional. And the final one is T. T is inherent talent. Each of us uh, has some inherent talent that we, we uh, utilize. I think um, uh, an athlete can run well, uh, has, has a good lung capacity. Uh, someone who's great at talking has great skills at being a marketing professional. These are all inherent talents that you have, but it does not, it is not the major thing for you. It is knowledge, putting that knowledge into practice and utilizing your talents. So I'll summarize this one slide with, you need to learn more. You need to make yourself relevant. You need to be out in the front of everything in order for someone to hire you for work. You need to put that knowledge into practice so that you can learn from your mistakes. And all of this should bank and utilize the talents that you already have. So I'll move on. Uh, so just to set uh, an expectation of what we're going to cover, I think the most important thing for you to know since you're here on this talk is what's in it for you. And I think what's in it for you is for you to understand at the end of this, uh, let's say 30 minutes or so, for you to understand what is happening currently, what is being disrupted, what is it impacting, and therefore, how does that translate into an opportunity for you? I think if, you, if we can leave this conversation with you having understood that, I'm not saying that you're going to leave this conversation and then suddenly start a business tomorrow, but you should know where to look and what to do. And I think that's what I'm trying to achieve with this talk. Uh, there will be questions after this, so we can dive into that. Uh, so I will start off by showing you what has happened, how it's changed people's behaviors, therefore in, uh, indicating to you what has, what is the problems that have happened and converting that into an opportunity. So let's just quickly move on. Um, I'm waiting for the slide to change, excuse me. All right. So, uh, three parts. Disruption. What do I mean by disruption? This virus has come in and it has changed the course of everything. It has changed how people behave, it's changed businesses, it's changed your college life, it has changed my business life, it has changed Kulo's uh, educational system. Everybody has had to change something and therefore the, the, the word is disruption. This virus has disrupted our normal way of life. And if there are two ways of looking at this disruption, we can sit back and cry over it or you can sit back, study what the problems are and convert those into opportunities for each one of us. And I think, at least as part of Young Indians, we had a call yesterday and it was quite evident that all of us are looking at this disruption as an opportunity and trying to figure out what we can do to make it better for everyone else and ourselves as well. The third part is the details, which is something that is going to take more than this one call. I would like uh, maybe Kulo and uh, Lezo, if possible, after this, uh, to set up a system where we can do something on a fairly regular basis perhaps pick an industry or pick a line of work and then continue and dive into the details of each of these businesses to understand what has been disrupted and what could the opportunity be. There's no practical way I can do that uh, on, on, in one hour. So uh, 
we'll leave the details for later. So let's move in now. Uh, let's understand what is the disruption, what has happened, what has changed, what has, what has gone wrong. So don't look at the slide right now, listen to, my, listen to me talk and then we can look at the slide at the end of it. Uh, I think two parts, two, two major changes have happened. One is people have changed, consumers have changed, the person who buys a service or product has changed. The other side is the businesses have also had to change, they've had to change but out of necessity. Um, I think there was this whole thing of moving online, moving digital, but this, uh, this, this virus has really pushed it forward quite, quite significantly. So let's, let's look at the consumer side of things. The consumer side of things, which is on the left-hand side of your screen, um, we can think of two situations. One is COVID is here to stay. COVID is going to go. So... In both situations, we have a problem that we're going to deal with, we're going to have to deal with. Let's assume that for the sake of everyone, that at some point we will get a vaccine and the virus will go. When the virus goes, it has taught us one big lesson that we are susceptible to such things, which means that whether we get the vaccine or we don't get the vaccine, it is possible at some future point that something similar like this can happen again. So because of that, we now need to change what we now call that normal. We're going to have to change it. We're going to have to change how we behave. We're going to have to change everything because COVID may come and go, but there will be another one else. And everyone is saying it's not a question of if there will be another one. It's a question of when there will be another one. The second part, which is the second table on your left-hand side, which is what I just explained to you, which is that the behavior of people are likely to change for the foreseeable future. So what does that mean? That means that if you're running a business or if you're running your own, own uh, if you're working for someone else, the way we deal with customers has also got to change. So if you don't change, you're going to be left behind. Uh, people, the, the other big change that you see in customers is everybody is going to change the way they spend money. And that is very important because they spend money on what is going to be a business for you. So one is it's not going to be cash as much. It's going to be more digital payments. It doesn't affect the situation too much, but one big change is that people are not going are going to be very risk averse and not take loans. If they don't take loans, they will spend less. If they spend less, it means that you have to fight harder to get that money as compared to somebody else. So let's move on. I wanted to give you an example of an industry that has been affected: um, tourism. So let's just look at this uh, this slide that's on your screen. A customer lands at the airport, gets into a taxi, comes to a hotel, goes out for, for a meal, goes on a trek, has a cup of coffee somewhere, goes out and enjoys the evening of wherever he is, and then flies out. At a very simple level, what we're looking at over here is that, I'll show you, I'll give you an example of how COVID has disrupted everything. When he gets off that plane, everybody at the airport is going to be test him for COVID, check this, check that. He'll be, uh, so that disrupts that situation there. Gets into the taxi. The cost of traveling now is increased because nobody wants to share a taxi anymore. You're going to have to hire your own taxi, so which is four times the cost. You go to a, ho a home stay. It's not necessarily the traveler that's the only one that's worried, but even the host. The host is also worried, am I going to get the disease from this person who's come? It changes everything. It changes the perception of that person at the home stay or the hotel. Everybody's worried. Um, it's, uh, so now when you go for dinner, you can't go to a crowded place. You can't go for a buffet. You're going to have to sit in a corner somewhere, be served, order online. Everything changes over there. When you go for a trek, you can't go and join a group of 15 people going on a trek and meet new people. You're going to have to go and hire your own guide, your own porter, and travel on your own. Everything has changed uh, in this industry. Uh, you can't, uh, you, sorry, you can't uh, go out for a night out somewhere because... You don't know who you're going to meet, who you're going to get infected from, who you're going to infect. Everything has changed. So uh, just to give you an idea in one simple industry of tourism, how things have changed with this virus. So in every other industry, things have changed. And on the next slide, this is one of the heavy slides that I'm going to run you through. Um, I, I'm, I don't want you to look at this slide all at once. Follow me. Let's just look at the first box on the left-hand side. I'm guessing the slide has come on your screen. Uh, Meadow, can you tell me if the slide is reached?
Yeah, okay. So you need to look at this uh, information. This, this, is the, this, is, this is going to be a little heavy slide for me to explain to you. And I want you to follow me as I speak. On the top left, the average man who is going to be your customer has changed a lot of things. And if they haven't changed it, they will change it. First, consumption habit. I'll give you an example of how consumption habit is going to change. People today will buy something when they need it. Now, after all these lockdowns, people will buy a little bit more than what they need because they're not sure whether uh, tomorrow is going to be a lockdown or next week is going to be a lockdown or whether this product is going to be available. So the habit of consumption is going to change. The spending behavior is going to change. As I told you in the last slide, people are going to use more uh, immediate expenditure rather than take a loan and buy something big. The reason for that is if I take a loan, let's say I buy a washing machine with a loan, I have to pay that loan back with an EMI every month for the next two years. Now, if there's a lockdown for two months and my employer decides not to pay me, where am I going to get the money to pay for that EMI? So the spending behavior is quite significant in terms of its impact on industries. Travel habits. Today, people, well, yesterday, let's say, before COVID, people would fly from A to B for a meeting and then come back the same day. Today, that's not going to happen. It's all going to be online. Now, how does that impact us? It impacts us because the aviation industry is going to take a toss. Um, people would have bought things along the way while they travel. The, the general demand of things is going to drop. Socializing habits are going to come down. Restaurants will lose revenue. Bars will lose revenue everywhere. So contactless. So, so let's look at this is, this is behavioral change in your consumer. And you'll understand why I'm saying this when we reach the next slide. Let's move to the second box on the right-hand side, retail shops. This is something that even you guys have experienced here in Kohima or Dimapur, which is that shops have had to stay shut. So there's this whole business of home delivery that has come up, which has allowed shops to run their businesses, yet not stay open. So what's going to happen in the near future? People are going to start moving their businesses online. Um, already in the last couple of years, a lot, a lot of us have started buying from Amazon and Flipkart. We've started moving our entire shopping online. A new trend that you will see and has already started is called augmented reality stores. That is, uh, just to put it very simple, you can go onto your phone, you can log into a shop, and you can actually walk down the aisles using virtual reality that they have taken. So you can walk down the aisles as if you were actually in that shop, order, and then they will deliver it to your house. So even something as simple as shops have changed. Payments, the second box on the left-hand side. Uh, people will change the way they pay money. Now, this is something that is actually really, really good for businesses. Earlier, people would take credit and pay later. Today, everything is digital. If it's digital, it happens immediately. So for businesses, you get cash quicker. Let's move to manufacturing. Manufacturing, this is going to be important because the way people manufacture stuff is going to change. There's going to be less of jobs for sure, but everything is going to be automated. Logistics is something that is very, very important to manage now because people need to get you the product. They can't have it centrally stored somewhere in Calcutta and then reach the Northeast because of disruptions. You need to, you need to have localized hub and spoke models of, uh, I mean, these are complicated terms, but you can Google it later, hub and spoke model where manufacturers send smaller stuff out to different, different locations and use those multiple warehouses. Uh, services. This is an important one for you because Nagaland has a very high scope of service business rather than manufacturing. With everything moving online, the market for you sitting here in Koima or Dimapur is now the world. There's no one to stop you. There's no geographical limit. If you have a skill, if you have knowledge, you've put that into practice and you have some sort of talent, you can take that and convert it into a business model and reach the world. Um, you can stay at home. The model is tell your customers, stay at home, we will serve you. Or stay in your office, we will serve you. Stay wherever you are, we will serve you. So the, the, the fundamental advantage for you right now with this change is that the market scope for you is much, much larger. So let's look at the last box, which is opportunity. Uh, you can work from anywhere. You can work from anywhere as long as you have a computer and an internet connection. The market is now global. Everything is online. So now it boils down to you. Can you think of an idea? Where are the problems that people are facing? And do you have the guts to start a business? 
this. This slide, um, yeah. So what this slide tells you is something that's quite that that can shape your uh, business ideas. For every hundred rupees that a consumer in India spends, where does it go? Twenty-six percent of twenty-six rupees for every hundred goes on food. Six rupees goes on house. Sorry, goes on clothing. Almost twenty rupees goes on transport, and then you can see the rest: miscellaneous goods and services, education, so on and so forth. The three boxes that have been circled in red are the ones that have been most affected by COVID, but the rest have not yet been so affected. So, when you're thinking of which business line to get into, what you want to do, how you want to do it, have a look at this slide, because this is where the money is. This is where the money goes. I don't think. Corona is going to change too much in terms of the pattern that people spend. The mode of delivery and the mode of receiving it will change, yes. But have a look at this slide and use this as some sort of a tool to figure out if you want to start a business, where where you can get into. Now, I was asked some questions uh, through email and uh, on the phone, so let me just address those questions before I move on to the next slide. Which is the opportunities. So the first question was, Corona has going to has has uh, made a lot of people lose their jobs. So what is the opportunity for those who have lost their jobs? So I, my answer to this question is very simple. You need to upskill. Now, what does upskill mean? Upskill means you need to make yourself relevant. You need to have skills that you can convince someone to hire you. It's on you. It's not on the employer. Yes, people have lost their jobs, but The entire system has changed. It's all online. Your markets have changed. Your skill requirements have changed. So, if I had a business of 20 people and I let go of all 20 people, when my business restarts, let's say in January, I'm not going to go back and hire the same 20 people because the way I do business has changed. So, I think it's up to the employees now to to uh, to upskill, learn new things, and then come back and hit the market again. You may not work in the same industry again, but there are definitely jobs available. In fact, there will be more jobs available now than before because you can be employed by anyone sitting anywhere in the world because the way we do business has changed. Second question was: When organizations rehire, will they prefer experienced candidates over fresh graduates? So I, I, my answer is very simple: The game has changed, and so will the players. Um, it's up to you to figure out whether you can build the skills that are required. But I can tell you from my perspective, the people that I had hired, and I'm pretty sure it's the same for a lot of other people, uh, may not necessarily be the same people I would like to hire again. I will look for new talent, new skill, uh, new skills that are more relevant to what I'm going to do rather than what I was doing. Uh, the third question I had was: uh, India Trail is a travel agency that I run, and Post COVID, what are the opportunities for us? So we've been doing a lot of thinking, and I think we're changing the way we do business. So for one, we are getting into virtual tourism, which is essentially going out and recording stuff and then trying to present it to people online rather than them having them come all the way here. Uh, we are developing our own standard operating procedures that we will use, and we will hope that they are, they will be good and get good feedback so that people will feel more safe and and, and secure with us. We're getting into niche tourism, which is uh, uh, we'll be getting into very specific sort of things that we're going to do. So people will come to us specifically for that. We're changing our model from trying to get everyone to come here to high-end clients, as in people who will pay more for less, and we give them better care. The last one is that we're creating a club of travel agencies across the northeast where we can all work together and we reach out to more people. Um, the second last question we had was: Small businesses that have gone online, will they? How will they keep up after COVID? So, this is a very good question. I think um, the examples are Fresh Pack. Um, they've they've done really well. They've created this online business. There is Online Express. There's YV Deliveries. A lot of small businesses that have come up. There are restaurants that have gone online. A lot of adaptations that people have done in order to stay relevant and to stay alive. And I think people will remember that they have created a brand. They've solved the problem. So even after COVID, I'm sure since they have adapted to meet the current situation, they will adapt to meet the situation after COVID as well. So I'm pretty sure that they will stay relevant. More businesses will come up. 
um, one person asked me about digital marketing and what's the scope. So my, my suggestion there would be, it's very easy to set up a website today. Go, go to WordPress, set up your own website, learn what it takes to build that website, use your marketing skills at present to get that website into prominence, make it, make it important, make it a physical product that you can talk to people about, learn the marketing cycle, and then you'll have all the skills related, required in order to be a digital marketing expert. Now, let's talk. This is the one slide that I want you guys to look at, which is I spend a lot of time trying to think of where could the opportunities be. So travel and tourism, I already mentioned virtual tourism, focus on high-end clients. Let's start from the bottom, which is online services, because I think this is something that any of you can do. So one is you need to take your business model to an online business model, which therefore allows you to reach more people. The example I will give you is uh, my mother. She's 70 years old. She has some Zumba classes that she, she does. So she is in Madras and every week, I think three times a week, they would have a, a one hour class at some gym somewhere and they would all go, some 20 of them. She got stuck in the US for four months uh, because of COVID. And what the Zumba class owner has done is recorded the class, put it up online for these same 20 people. She could, this, this Zumba class owner now continues to get the fees that she was getting earlier. She's got 20 people who sit at home, log into these classes and do it online. And I think that's a phenomenal example of um, staying alive and staying relevant and not losing your customers. Similarly, on the same model, I think if you can start, look at any of these options, first being tutorials, second, fitness, all the gyms have had to shut. You can start your own fitness business, counseling. Uh, no, so you, the one thing you need to remember here is you don't necessarily need to be the expert that does this. You can start a business that connects people that, do, that, that one, on one side require it and the other side offer it. Tutorials, for example, I'm sure you have batchmates who run classes or you know, run tutorials. It's a good idea for you to set up a business where you find people who require classes and you find people on the other side who deliver these classes. Um, similarly for fitness, you, know, you can approach the owners of one or two gyms, tell them, listen, I will take your classes online. You manage the payments and the collections, get the clients back and give them their fees. Counseling, cooking classes, baking classes, music lessons, entertainment, photography classes, physiotherapy. And then the last two, um, which is, the, uh, so write this down. There's a website called Upwork. If you go to upwork.com, I think you will find significant opportunities for you immediately to log in, create a profile and offer your services. Again, I'm going to go back to the K, P and T that I started with. Knowledge, practice and tools. So uh, talent. You need to figure out what you're good at, what you could be good at, and that's what you offer. So go to Upwork, see what people do. So here you have people from across the world that do one or two things really well. They've created a profile and people go to them and pay them money to, to, to receive these services. So that's something you can start doing today. Um, let's look at quickly the other options, fashion, beauty, and cosmetics. Um, I think this is another huge thing here, especially in, in Nagaland. Um, you have all your marketing companies, your Oriflames and so on and so forth. I know a lot of people who have used this lockdown opportunity as an opportunity to set up themselves as suppliers for this and they have done insanely well. I know one person who has started an Instagram channel about fashion and beauty and has done insanely well. The amount of money you can make from these things is really good. Of course, your, your skills should be that you need to do research and you need to find the right products and you need to offer them to the right people. Um, uh, I think this is another big opportunity, especially for, for any one of you who, have, uh, who still has connections with your villages because they will be ma manufacturing products, they will be growing vegetables, they'll be growing or... or organic stuff which requires the market and that's the biggest problem that people have had so far which is that they have all this organic stuff and they don't know what to do with it so they're giving it away free or they're throwing it away so i think if you can find a way to reach out to people in your own village 
bring the produce to a market, which could be Kohima, Dimapur, any other big town. That's a phenomenal opportunity for anyone. Uh, again, you know, you're just the middleman. You are. There's no setup time required. You just have to go to the village, pick up the produce, buy it at a good price, and then come come to the village and sell it over there. It'll teach you a lot of lessons when you do this. Um, I think the rest is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. Warehousing is something you could look at because uh, people need to bring their produce to different different areas closer to the point of consumption. So uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things now, which is uh, I told you in the beginning that you're not going to leave knowing exactly what you're going to do, but I want you to use these tools to think about what you think you could get into, identify something that interests you, let us know, because we are all part of a bigger network. And if there's something that we can help you get more information in, and I think the kind of information you're going to need right now is how do things happen at present and how are they going to change in the future? And therefore, what is it that you can do? So the purpose of this one slide is not for you to have a Eureka moment saying, this is exactly what I'm going to do. But I think it is for you to understand how things have changed. What are the opportunities that are there? Sit back understand and think about what you would like to do and then get back to us and say listen i'm interested in uh, let's say photography i want to do photography classes online how do i do it and then we'll help you we'll connect you with people who we think might might benefit uh, so what is it that you can do now i think uh, essentially you need to have skills you need to make a plan and you need to execute it um, I'm going to be very disappointed if you guys are going to sit here and wait for the government to come and give you a loan or the government to intervene. Those are not the people who are going to be entrepreneurs. I think what you need to do is you need to realize that this is an opportunity. The world is at your doorstep. There is nothing that is stopping you now except your own self. So what do you what do you have to do now? I think what you need to do is you need to do some research. You need to understand yourself better. You need to identify what are the skills that you can bring to the doorstep, you can bring to the market, and then lean on other people for advice and support, and that's where we come in. And I think make a plan, reach out to us, and we'll be happy to help you with whatever we can. So my email address is there at the bottom. If you have any questions, you can shoot them across to me. Um, but just remember that I think I can share this PPT with you if you want. Utilize it to do some research, identify opportunities. What are the skills you have and what is it that you can bring to the table? What help do you need? Um, I think that puts me back to you. Cool. All right. Thank you, Rohan. I'm sorry. That was I, I, very refreshing. I hope I wasn't rambling away, but I, I couldn't see anyone. I couldn't hear anything, so I just kept talking. I don't know. I th think, think, Rohan. I think uh, that was a very interesting perspective from everything we've been hearing. We were hearing about the economy crashing, and we we're hearing about how people are struggling. Um, I think for most of the attendees right here, it's probably about what the world is going to be, you know, five years from now when you graduate, or three years from now. And I think uh, he's. Rohan has done a fantastic job by presenting all these opportunities, maybe some of them which you could probably start even now. So, you know, we haven't received any questions in the chat box, uh, actually. But if some of you have some questions here right now, you know, you can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Okay, we don't speak. Really informative. <laughs> Nobody has a question. Oh, they're too scared. Yep, there's uh, one question from Meadows. But um, so, what are the small business ideas that students can do right now to gain some work experience without any capital? Um, I think. Uh, Right now, what you can do is use your downtime to learn how to start a business online. So um, 
one of the attendees Naomi had asked me about digital marketing. So I think if you go online, you go to WordPress, learn how to build your own website, go to YouTube, learn how to start your own channel, um, go to Instagram, try a business page out. I think these things will teach you the skills that require that you require in order to have an online business. Um, so that would be one thing that you can do. Uh, it doesn't require any capital at, at all to any of these things. Uh, in terms of small business ideas, what I would suggest you do is while you're at home, sit down and make a list of all the difficulties you've had to face because of COVID. Each of those difficulties is an opportunity. Uh, for example, um, Parents have had their kids inside the house every day for the last four months or three months. It's something that they're not used to and it presents new challenges for them. How do I keep my children active? How do I keep them occupied? How do I keep them busy? Otherwise, you know, it's difficult for them. Uh, the dynamics of everything inside the household, household has changed. If you can come up with an entertainment idea that you can put online that can be educate, educative as well, you can utilize that and reach out to every one of these houses and get the parents to put their kids online and pay you 100 rupees per kid for it. I think that, that would be the quickest idea that you can think of. I've got another question. How do we assure sanitized products to buyers? We are trying to reach out to give, give them a currency. Um, good question. I think uh, one easy thing, uh, you, get a, you get a UV light. I don't know whether it's available right now or not, but there's an ultraviolet light that you can radiate on the product and it sanitizes it. The second is a very simple solution. You carry a spray gun, you know, like the ones you get the Collins spray with and put a diluted, uh, put a diluted uh, what's it called? sanitizer in it and just spray down the product before you hand it over. I think these are the two things that I can think of. The first one might be difficult to, to execute. The second one is quite easy to do. Another thing I could suggest to answer Meadow's question is uh, a lot of us still run our businesses. You can reach out to people to um, intern with them. Why not? I mean, Meadow runs a restaurant business. I'm sure he could have someone intern with you to learn the business, learn how it works. Lezo is starting up a business. Kulo has his own business. I have my business. A lot of us with different, different businesses, if you can offer yourself as interns, we'll give you what to do. Thanks. Thanks, Owen. So I'm, I'm curious also uh, if the majority over here agree with Rohan on there being opportunities right now or whether you feel uh, or whether you disagree with him. You know, if some of you also would like to um, maybe express your own opinion on what he, st what he stated about the current situation, you're also welcome to do that. Hey, uh, Rohan, we got one more question here. Can you please yeah. give some ideas about online marketing and how to be good at that so that we can reach the people? So I think uh, for online marketing, you need to know the tools of the game. The tools of the game are how do you bring some, how do you convert someone sitting in front of his computer or his phone into a consumer or a customer? The way to do that is to go through that entire cycle yourself. So I'm going to go back to the point I raised earlier to address Naomi's question, which is how do you get into digital marketing? You need to know how a website is built. What, is, what does it take to make a website? You need to know how, how websites are tracked online. What are the parameters that are used? And this is not difficult to do. I can tell you that it's quite simple. Google has all tutorials available to explain everything to you. Uh, you need to know how YouTube reaches out to its people. You need to know how Instagram works. What are the what are the basic parameters in which if you put up a post and I, I, I do do any of you have a business in a profile on Instagram? If you don't, convert your private account into a business account, your own very Instagram accounts. And what will it what it'll do is that over a period of time you can go and see something called insights. And this is very very important if you're going to do marketing. You take your Instagram account convert it into a business account. After a couple of days, watch the insights. The insight will tell you every post that you have put out, how many people have seen it, what is the profile of the people who have seen it, whether they are male, whether they're female, whether they are 
15 years old, 25 years old, 35 years old, 100 years old, whatever it is. And that will give you an idea that if you post something at 2 p.m., it reaches this many people and this is the profile. If you post something at 6 p.m., it reaches these many people and this is the profile. So just examples like this, I think, is research that you need to do in order to figure out whether you can do online marketing or not. And these are the basics. So just remember, you are now competing with the rest of the world. So the more research you can do, the more you learn, uh, the better off you're going to be. So I'll just summarize this one point. Go online, learn how to do, how to make a website, how to set up a YouTube channel, how to set up an Instagram business account. Study the feedback, get on to Google Analytics and go to Google. They have all these tutorials so you can study it and learn how to do it. According to you, are small businesses doing enough marketing? Well, uh, that's a tough one. Um, I think right now, in during the corona time in, let's say, Kohima, I can't speak for Dimapur, uh, maybe Kulo can. Uh, in, in Kohima, during these times, there's more demand than supply. So if you have a small business and you're offering ABC product, it will sell because people need it. Uh, there's very little competition. There's very little time out to go and buy stuff. So I don't know whether small businesses at the moment need to do marketing at all in the first place. If we're talking about post-COVID-19, uh, I think today with Instagram, almost every business that I'm aware of in Kohima and Dimapur has an Instagram page and they're reaching out to people. They keep doing these online contests to make themselves uh, popular and the brand is familiar. So in short, I think they're doing enough marketing for the size of market that exists in Ireland. But if, if a business here is trying to reach out to the rest of the country or the rest of the world, then the answer is no. Hello, do you think you could answer that question for Dimapu? Hey, thanks, Ron. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> well, you know, I think if we, you know, I agree completely with what Rohan said. And uh, Dimapur also follows a similar thing. I don't, I think the businesses that are suffering the most are the ones which have not learned how to adapt. But otherwise, uh, those businesses which have sort of started using WhatsApp to sell things or, you know, Instagram and things, I think uh, this, the demand is quite high. You go out anywhere in town, you know, it's always a rush. It, there's just a huge number of people and but i think uh i think habits are changing uh, and this is this is happening in the whole country and people are getting more comfortable with digital payments they're getting more comfortable with that and if small businesses are going to survive they're gonna have to be able to probably um take their business online um, and also maybe figure out a way maybe to see if they can scale up to some extent to look beyond Nagaland, in my opinion. Um, because there is a huge market out there, uh, which I don't think our businesses or entrepreneurs focus enough on. But you have every single country in the world trying to get into the Indian market, while for us here in Nagaland, actually, we have that whole market available to us if we just have that product, which you know um, we could maybe brand and sell. So, uh, I'm actually I feel very optimistic about the future, and I think. Uh, th and then there's two. There's one thing about marketing. Uh, I just uh, I feel that there's a saying that nothing kills a good, uh, nothing kills a bad product better than good marketing. So if your marketing is so good, then you get so many customers who don't like your product, then it just destroys your business. So uh, yeah, small businesses need to be, uh, know what they want, I guess. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think I was digressing. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> so I'll give you an example of uh, a small businesses able to, to handle the situation right now. Um, the example I can give you is um, of a guy who started a courier business in uh, Kohima, started by picking up letters and dropping letters. And that was as recent as maybe a year back. 
to the point where he is the largest delivery service in Kohima right now, employs more than 20 people and works in three different districts. And all that has happened in the last 12 months. And that's all because he saw everything in front of him as an opportunity and took it. Online Express. Cool. Uh, the other example that I can give you is of someone else who's on this call who's uh, figured out that online education is the way to go and has dropped everything and gone into that line of business. Uh, Meadows also changed how he, I mean, I think the frozen Momo business was a great idea. Got the market at the right time. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of examples in front of each of you. So um, I, I do, I did see a lot of people on the Excel sheet say that they wanted to get into accounting and see, I don't know if that was because I was talking or because you actually do. But if you are quite serious about that, send me an email. Uh, this, the way to do it is, uh, is, is in different, different steps. So I can send you an email that lists out what you need to do in order to get there. Um, so I have a question, Rohan. In your opinion, uh, which are, you know, here in Nagaland, which are those businesses which are suffering the most right now? That's a very good question. I think um, shops that sell non-essential commodities are the ones that suffer the most because you're completely at the mercy of the administration and all the uh, uh, various organizations that exist to put lockdowns. Um, so these guys, uh, and inside of that, the, the, the ones who have products that have a shorter shelf life will be the worst affected. So I think... I mean, industry-wise, apart from education, tourism, construction, the rest is only shops. So I think these will be the ones who are affected the most. Essential commodities get away, but non-essential shop shelf life stores will have the worst impact. And Rowan, what's your opinion on how long this COVID-19 crisis is? So I think March... 2021 is when they're planning to make the vaccine commercially viable for everyone. So I, I think the minute people get to know that the vaccine is available and out and about, I think that's when things will start getting much, much better. So I, I think by December, we'll have some idea of when the vaccine is coming out. And by March, we should have the vaccine. So I think uh, hopefully, hopefully that will be the timeline. I'm, I'm quite very optimistic that it's going to be sooner than later. <laughs> hope you're right. I hope so. Meadow, you have a question? Um, hi, hi. I haven't actually got a question, but I thought I'd just add in something. Uh, guys, I'm Meadow. Um, I run Bambusa as well as I'm the chair of YI. Um, thanks for joining in, uh, first of all, and thanks, Ron, for this amazing um, session. I just thought I'd just add in to the fact that it's it's a really an amazing time for anyone who wants to do business or who wants to at least experience some sort of business because right now uh, the the whole thing is level playing field has just leveled out to so to say um, you could probably just stay home and cook something and start a business that way or you could you could procure some vegetables and just say you know we're going to deliver it to your house and you know, probably charge them a small delivery fee. So you're making a double revenue stream, once from the delivery and once from the, the sale of products. So I think it's an amazing time, even if you're a student, to experience what businesses is. Uh, you can never start a big business. I would always say start off small. That's how I started also. And uh, I would just say that if, if this is like the perfect time for you, if I mean, because you're home, you're not too occupied with college or school. Um, and, and people are more than happy to get things delivered right now. So you just need to just just be on Instagram, maybe just go on Instagram or maybe use WhatsApp, use WhatsApp status as a post. Just say we deliver vegetables, call us on this number and you'll definitely get calls. Uh, and you, you can just start delivering stuff and making some money, start keeping accounts of it, um, understand how, what, revenue is understand what cost is understand what you know other expenses is understand what profit or loss is 
Um, and and just, I mean, I just personally think like the amount of, in Dimapur and Kohima, the amount of home restaurants that I've started is insane. Like every other person is making puri, uh, beef, pizzas, different stuff that they're making and they're just making it at home and delivering it. So with zero capital, you're starting off your business and people are actually ordering. People are liking it. They're reordering. My own, like my my own cousin who started about a week, uh, about a month back, she's doing kimbap in uh, in Kohima, and she does ten thousand rupees sales every day. That's that's like just amazing. Like during this time, so there are so much opportunities, guys, and not necessarily a restaurant if you don't know how to cook. Maybe <laughs> vegetables, some essentials, some things. You know, I mean that you could just start doing. Uh, you could target maybe, you know, there are older folks who don't want to go out for even small things, to buy small things. You could offer your services to them and in turn make some profits out of them. So there's a lot of opportunities. So I would definitely say that, I mean, in, in connection to this uh, session, I think you should reach out and just go out there and just put yourself in situations like that. If you if you really want to be an entrepreneur, you have to take opportunities as they come and and create opportunities rather than anything else so yeah thanks guys thanks we have questions now me what are the businesses booming the most at the moment do you mean in Nagaland or anywhere maybe you can answer both <laughs> um i'll start with anywhere i think the the, uh, the businesses that uh, that I can tell you that I know of, uh, Zoom for one, Netflix another, um, Amazon, um, all these online based, all these businesses that are based significantly on an online platform are the ones that have done really well. Um, Amazon, as you can see, the guys just making billions by the day. Zoom was at the right place at the right time. They were there uh, for a couple of years and no one knew about them, but then they suddenly came into prominence because of this and they've done insanely well. Netflix, uh, Netflix has done, in, yeah, yeah, Meadow, I'm, I'm, I'm just starting with the rest. Um, Netflix has also done really well. Uh, to my knowledge, in Nagaland, I think most of the businesses have suffered, except for businesses that sell essentials um, and restaurants with delivery services. I think these are the only two businesses that have done, or rather done anything of consequence in Nagaland at the moment. Everybody else has taken the hit. So, Businesses that, that produce and supply essential commodities and restaurants that have a delivery service. So these, these two things, um, I think, have done well. Okay, so we got five more minutes. Uh, would, does anyone have any more questions or would like to make any statements? So while you come up with those questions, I just wanted to say one more thing, which is... Um, if you guys are waiting for the government to come up with a solution and offer you something to do on a plate, that's not going to happen. The government is actually looking to us to come up with solutions for what can be done. So you could be one of those. The second point is uh, you cannot go through a one-hour talk and come out with, with a great business idea in mind. So there's a little bit of back, uh, homework that you would need to do. Uh, the point I would like to make over there is that you have access to all of us, not only on these calls, not only on that uh, you know, WhatsApp group, but you have all our details. Write to us if you have an idea and you need more help. Write to us if you have an idea and you want to do some more research or you need some more guidance on it. So I think what you need to basically take away from this call is there are opportunities. Uh, if you remember the slide I put up where these opportunities could lie and the last is, now it's up to you to figure out how you're going to take these opportunities and convert them into, into a business. So, uh, utilize the assets at hand. Yeah, I think there's uh, one good question. All right. From um, Sharon. Mm -hmm. um, share your business ideas for rural areas as well, because in Netherlands, yeah, so rural areas, you have to see what is, two, look at it from two perspectives. What does the rural area require? That's something you can supply them, which is everything that the cities have and what do rural areas produce. So to my knowledge, I think the production of rural areas is all agriculture. 
there's a lot of talk going on now about two things. One is all these delivery mechanisms of bringing stuff from the rural side to the towns and cities. So you can get something over there, which is either as basic as picking up and delivering it to the to, from rural to town, or second is picking up from rural and delivering it outside of Nagaland, for which there is a big market coming up. Um, I think today they have launched something called Yellow Chain. Uh, you can check that out. It's a website where I think the government is trying to connect buyers and sellers. So have a look at that. Um, I think, you know, you can forget about digital marketing in the rural areas, but you have to make your business primarily around agriculture and how you can take that produce, which is largely organic, and find a better and bigger market for it. I think Futsuro would be a great example for you to study. Futsuro cabbages reach all the way up to, I think, West Bengal. So uh, here's a good example of a short shelf life organic agricultural produce that is grown in large quantities from a, uh, from, from a rural area and sent all the way to uh, different parts of the country. So that's a good example for you to study to figure out how to do it. Green caravan. Thanks, thanks, Ron. Yeah, just this last point. This green caravan is run sure, by sure. Richard Bello, and uh, you can study their model as well because they are trying to help people in the rural areas supply their material in town. So you could be the intermediary. Go to your rural areas and identify who has what to sell and supply it to Green Caravan because they can take care of the sale. All right. Hmm. All right. Uh, hey, you know, there's just. Uh, we had roughly about 16 people over here. We have a few other members who, uh, more people in our WhatsApp group. You know, all of you who have logged in today, uh, please feel free, be informal. And at the same time, there are no silly questions. Everybody is learning from each other. There's a once in a lifetime um, pandemic, which we're experiencing right now, and nobody really has experience in navigating through a pandemic. So uh, if, you have questions, you have, you know, ideas, then uh, this is the right time actually to ask. And I hope that we can continue this series. We would like to have another session and we would, I would love to, uh, as a uh, Yuva chair, uh, what we would like is we would also like to have one session where you guys be the panelists and maybe give your opinions on what are the opportunities and where we would be the audience and maybe can have a discussion. You know, we would love to make it more interactive. I think uh, if we make it more interactive, we would be able to learn more from each other. Uh, so uh, Rohan, is there anything else uh, you'd like to add? Any final statements? Um, yeah, last, last comment is if, if uh, this is to you and Meadow, if there is, a, I mean, if it's possible for us to have a chat like this maybe once every couple of weeks so that, uh, I mean, maybe not necessarily with an agenda, but where people who have done their research and come back with and require more assistance, we can do it. So and maybe as a step of maybe five or six steps towards getting people's business ideas firmed up. Mm -hmm. what? So for you to decide later. And, and this, and share. Sure, sure. That's why uh, this first, we've called it series one. Um, all of you who've registered, you know, we would like to come back another session and we'd like you to register again. Um, you know, while, while you were talking about this, I'm sorry, something um, I just remembered, but I had a friend, uh, he's based in New York and he wants to import our Raja Mercha there. Basically he wants the Raja Mercha transported to Taiwan and then from Taiwan package and then sell in New York. Now the thing is, he obviously wants somebody in Nagaland on the ground who can take care of all the regu regularity, you know, the regulations and take care of all the, maybe the packaging so that I can reach Taiwan. But I mean, that's a business opportunity where people outside are looking. And I think uh, that type of expertise, you know, you're gonna have to do your research to, get, to understand all the requirements for food export and things. But I mean, I'm saying there's an opportunity there, especially, uh, which might be ideal for the rural areas actually. I just remember that. And he's still looking for somebody in case. Yeah. So, uh, 
I guess uh, with that method, do you, uh, anybody else, any last comments otherwise? No, it's fine, Kulu. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right, then. Thank you so much. We, you know, we will conduct another session very soon. Uh, I think next up, Lezo might be hosting it. So uh, we look forward to seeing all of you again. Thank you for joining. And we will welcome your questions. Please mail Rohan if you have any, or you need more details. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rohan. Okay. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you, everyone.